This thing called company culture um, has been around for a long time. In fact, I first read about it way back in 1982 when I was studying for a master's degree from Canada. Um, do we have any Canadians in the room? Um, wonderful country. I studied at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, which just so happens to be the coldest of the cities. Boy, was that, I flew in on the 5th of January and it was minus 28. Bit of a culture shock for me. Anyway, I finished my master's degree and during that time, I studied culture. This, it, it was being written about then. And to be honest with you, when I read about this thing called corporate culture, organisational culture, when I first read about this, I didn't get too excited about it. It seemed to be very theoretical, very, very academic. It didn't seem to be practical. Um, I finished my master's degree. I came back down to Australia and I was doing work, different training and consulting work in different companies. I became confused because I go into one company and you could feel positive vibes in the air. It just felt positive and upbeat. I go into another company, it didn't feel the same. There's a bit of tension in the air. I go into another company and you could cut the air with a knife. It was that tense. Now, I knew I was feeling part of the culture of these companies, but I was confused because I didn't know what you could do about it or um, why it was like it was. Having said that, I could see the dramatic impact that these cultures were having on individuals within those companies. For example, in those places where it was really positive and upbeat, people would almost literally walk over hot coals to get things done. In those places where you could cut the air with a knife, good luck. So I remained in this confused state for quite some time until I, I was in the audience one day at a conference and I was listening to this gentleman make a presentation. This gentleman used a term which clicked on a light in my mind. Um, I finally understood culture just from this one term that this gentleman used. He was referring to his own organisation and this is the term he used. He said, this is the way we do things around here. This is the way we do things around here. All of a sudden, something in my mind clicked and it wasn't long after that that I went away and invented a new term, a new concept, which I think goes all the way, helping people understand culture in simple and practical terms. The concept I created is called UGRs, which stands for Unwritten Ground Rules. Unwritten Ground Rules. Probably the best way for me to describe what I mean by UGRs or Unwritten Ground Rules is to share some actual UGRs in a company that I'm aware of. Now, what I'm about to share with you are real. They are actual UGRs and they are these. At our meetings, it isn't worth complaining because nothing will get done. The only time anyone gets spoken to by the boss is when something is wrong. The organisation talks about the importance of service, but we know they don't really mean it, so we don't really have to worry about it. I'll interject at this point and say that when I'm sharing these with people from the same company, it's not uncommon at about this point for people to say, have you been watching us? Our funniest jokes usually involve making jokes about our work colleagues. When I first wrote this, it read a little more brutally and it read our funniest jokes usually involve dumping on our workmates. We go through the motions with our bosses. Once they've gone, we do what we want. A really good test for UGRs in any company is the new employee. If the new employee is lucky, they get an induction or orientation where they get told, this is the way we do things around here and then they go and find out the truth. And they find out by deduction. They will look for certain cues and clues to deduce the UGRs in their company. Now, it's at this point I'd like to play a hypothetical with you. And a hypothetical is this. You are a...